Welcome back to D2 Wrenchworks and DIY guys. Today's video we have a super funky, super cool, well it used to be cool back in its day I guess you could say. Uh, $1200 new though. This is a Super V because of the funky frame design. Some other companies like Trek they had a Y frame similar to this. Uh, Specialized had another similar Y frame. This is to try to keep like a comfortable geometry for what they called like XC cross country type riding. Like a lot of stuff your local trails have, maybe small jumps, a lot of up and down stuff you're still going to do climbing on. Uh, not like big long travel stuff like you do at like heavy trails where there's huge drops or you know maybe there's like ski lifts to take you up and down, maybe downhill trails. None of that heavy duty stuff. Something you could do a lot of everyday stuff on is still going to be tough. Like I said, $1,200 new. This is actually the cheapest in 1998 Cannondale full suspension you could get. Uh, what we have here is some very cool and weird old technology. Unfortunately, it's nothing we can do anything with, but it is a Cannondale head shock. And as you can see here, this is not turning smoothly at all. Pretty cool designs and all of that. Uh, what it does is try to reduce the stiction before the technology of lockout forks where you could just twist it and it doesn't move anymore when you're trying to climb because that reduces the, the waste of power. They also have the same here on the back shocks, uh, not on this obviously being the cheaper one, but it avoids pedal bob where you're pedaling up, up and it's actually absorbing some of your power in the shock there. So we don't have any of that cool stuff, but we what with this came with originally, it has a coil spring inside of the cartridge here, which presses into the headset cups and you get about 60 millimeters of travel here. You have there's oil inside of this cartridge as well, so that these little needle bearings that are on all four sides of the circle here, well, all four areas of the circle spread out evenly. They go up and down, giving you like mechanical rebound. Uh, nothing that you're gonna do a whole lot of damage with, you know, on the trails, but it's meant to be like, you know, kind of fast glidey bike. So in the spirit of that, what I got ahead of time is this what we have is a RockShox NDXC this is from like 2005 something like that this came on a little bit newer full suspension bikes before the disc brakes came out you can see it doesn't even have an area where you would put the disc brakes but this gives us about the same axle to crown ratio we have a little bit more of adjustment here we have the double adjustments uh, you would adjust it you can only do like a tiny bit through the bolt here in the middle so it's, you have a slightly bit more travel. This is 80 millimeters. This only gives you 60 millimeters originally. So it's, it's nice to keep that. These aren't very heavy. Uh, the benefit also of having the head shock, if you did have a newer one, they actually like a couple models up. It depends how serious you get. They'll upgrade the rear shock and also give you one that had an air, an air and oil cartridge. Those are actually pretty nice. Those are worth rebuilding. Those also sell for a fortune on eBay. So. What we're going to do is put on a good old trusty rock shock and uh, that should keep us going from there. So now more back to the where we're going to get on the abandoned part of this bike because it is very much so abandoned. Not only is it barely turned, the fork is frozen, the brakes don't work very well. This side over here is moving, this side here is completely frozen. That's not a good sign. The, uh, the rear is the same, one side works okay. The other side completely frozen. Luckily, the frame shock has already been upgraded. It's got a pretty nice heavy duty spring on there as well. So we're gonna leave that there. It's a Fox Shock Vanilla R. Uh, I think it's like a 99. So whoever bought this, just put that on right when they got it. It's got some pretty good drivetrain stuff. I'm hoping that uh, like the springs on the brakes, these aren't completely trash. But uh, I do wanna try to soak them in some, what I have is a Vapo rust, and this stuff takes rust out like that keep these derailleurs because the STX is not terrible. It's still pretty good mid-range stuff. The crank looks like it's got pretty good wear on it. It's nothing terrible. It's not the best, but in the sake of the name of budget, we're going to keep it because it's still pretty lightweight for what it is. We obviously need a chain, not in good shape here. And we're going to have to see if this is a cassette or a freewheel wheel, but either way, I'm going to be changing that completely because 
I can put on a cassette wheel if I have to, or I'm going to be upgrading the free wheel because up here, this bike came with uh, some very old school Sax power grip, grip, grip shifters, and they are worn slam out. They are so bad. Not only are they a pain, you have to actually pull the grip out of the, the housing that bolts on. You have to separate them and feed a new shifter through and twist it back and click it together. It's kind of a mess to maintain these when you need to put new cables in. But we're only going to be having seven gears if we did decide to do that. I decided against it. So what we're going to do is make this more of a modern bike. Again, to keep going with the flow of the rebuild and the, you know, recovery of the bike. I want to put an eight speed on the back and we're going to keep the three speed up front. So that gives us more gears and I'm going to be putting a slightly bigger cassette on there. So you, it'll climb a little better as well. And the shifters we'll be putting on are going to be uh, Shimano Alivio or Altus. I can't remember. They're going to be trigger shifters. And to match that, that's actually what we're also going to be doing for the brakes. I'm going to be putting on a full new set of black Alivio or Altus, whichever one. They're pretty much the same uh, brake set. And that should conclude the beginning of this build because, well, actually, and also the, the front wheel was pretty destroyed, but um, sucking it in some WD-40 did pretty good. And obviously it needs tires, um, new cables and all of that. It's, everything here is a mess, so, and literally the frame is pretty disgusting. Like I said, this thing has been sitting abandoned for years. It's a cool bike. It really just needs some loving. So what we're going to do is just strip everything down, give it a whole good clean. And the next time you see this bike, it's going to be all together looking like a whole new bike, bringing back that 1998 funky goodness. So please don't forget to subscribe guys. I do have a Patreon channel as well. If you'd like to drop by and support this channel for more cool projects like this and uh, you know, to let you know in times like now, we can't find a bike sometimes. Look for something like this that's rusted and looks like junk because if you're really you're really willing to get your hands a little dirty, you could actually uh, you could have a good bike and I think we're going to be impressed with how nice this comes out. So stay tuned and see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.